And we're gonna have a look at this guy. Now there's some really, really interesting things to do with this. To begin with, I should probably rewrite it in a form that shows that there are not, there's not one argument of one gross complex number. There's really two arguments at play here, right? How shall I rewrite that left hand side? Top one minus the bottom one. Good. So this is when you're when you're taking the quotient of these two, right? It's subtracting the argument. That's all you're doing, right? So I've got this guy here. While I'm rewriting these, I might as well make it clear <laughs> what complex number I'm actually comparing to, right? So I will write z minus, and what point am I subtracting? Three plus two i. Three plus two i, right? Because I've got I've got that double negative in there. So just watch out for it. There's one of the angles that I'm interested in. And then here's the other one. It's already written in a nice neat form. Okay? So it's equal to pi of 4. Now, <coughs> excuse me. You remember that when we have, um, depending on what this angle over here on the right hand side is, okay, you can get some um, very nice, neat, obvious things depending on what you're interested in. So, for instance, just to revise, if I had, I think we had these two points, right? My two bags, yeah? And if I were comparing the arguments and I want the arguments to be equal, which is another way of saying the difference of the arguments is equal to zero, right? Where are my points going to be? Do you remember where you lined up when I wanted the arguments to be the same? You're going to be on, a, uh, on two rays, aren't you? Out this way and this way. Do you remember that? Because if you stand here, if you stand there, and you point your compass at both points, you're going to get the same bearing. Do you remember that? Now, in complex number terms, it's actually not about where you're standing and um, what your compass is. It's really about what the bags are measuring to you. Do you remember that? Because you can see, this is about, tell me the angle to Z. That's where you are, right? You're the locus of points you were moving from here, right? So it's actually the bags who are measuring you. You thought you were measuring the bags, the bags were measuring you. Uh, but you get the same effect because look, here's bag one, right? And it goes from the real axis, it measures up. It gets one angle. Here's bag two, it measures up. It also gets the same angle, right? So these are the actual arguments I'm interested in, yeah? which equate to you getting the same bearing as you look at both bags. Oh. That's equal to zero. What about if I said pi? What if I wanted the difference between the arguments to pi? It's um, that same one, but inside. It. Yeah, it's going to be on the, it's going to be the interval between the two points, between the bags, right? Do you remember why? Because um, it's a four hundred <coughs> like, when you take the top one minus the bottom one, um, it will be a 400. Because Ooh. from where you're measuring it from, it's, it's a 400. Good, good, good. So in case, in case you didn't catch that, right? Again, think about where the bags are measuring from. And you remember seeing this, right? Here's the first bag, and it measures its argument to you. It's negative, principal argument. Okay. And you get the second bag, well, it's measuring the same argument here. But when you take the difference between these two, you're going to be... Do you see what's happening, right? This is a negative. Yeah. This is a negative. So, yeah. so if I was going from here to here... I'm going to be having uh, a small one minus that negative one, which gives you pi because it can't do Okay. All right, that was fine. That was for zero. Then it was for pi. The second last one I got you to do is pi on two. Do you remember what we got with pi on two? You got a semicircle, right? Why did we get a semicircle? What property were we taking advantage of? Yeah, good. So the angle of a semicircle is a right angle, like so. Okay. <laughs> but then the last one I got you to do was a weird awkward angle. It was something like this, right? It was an acute angle, okay? Now, um, this time, <coughs> let's draw this thing so we can see what's going on. Let's draw where this point is, we'll draw where this point is, and then we can make our comparison. Excuse me. Now, here are our points, right? Now, you've got to be really careful with this, yes? Why is it I and not minus I? No, because the, it's minus. Because when I go Z take away a number, Z take away a number, right? That's the number where I'm measuring from. So I'm going Z take away a number, and the number is I, not negative I. If I wanted to measure from negative I, how would I rewrite it? What? How would I write this? It would be arg of Z take away negative I. That's where I'm measuring from, right? Which would be Z plus I. Does that make sense? In the same way that when you've got a circle, this is you can think about it in terms of translation of coordinates. So when you've got a circle and it's here, Right? Where's the center of this thing? And the answer is, minus you're at negative one, right? There's a shift happening, but it's the reverse of what you would think, and the y coordinate is one. <coughs> okay. Now, before I put some lines onto here, okay, what circle property 
like here, see with the angle to semicircle, what circle property am I taking advantage of to map this out? And I wonder if you remember what kind of shape you traced out, okay? If I gave you any two points, any two points, right? And where did you end up standing, yeah? Well, you actually stood in two spots, didn't you? Do you remember? We could either um, go around that way or under it as well. Yes. <laughs> right, so you have this kind of shape, right? Now, think about why you had this weird shape. It's not a circle, is it? Okay. Uh, it's two major arcs, two major arcs, in circles that have the same radius. Can you see why you've got, why you guys ended up having both sides? Do you remember why? What, again, I'm going to ask that question because no one quite has an answer for me yet. What circle property am I taking advantage of to know that you guys are all on an arc? Yeah, me too. Angle standing on the circumference of... Like standing on the yeah, keep going. Standing from the same, like, um, like corner. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I've really got a, a full circle here, right? Which means you've got an arc here, and all of you guys were measuring out angles standing on that arc. Do you remember that? We say it's standing on because it looks like two legs. Okay. So you've got one guy measuring pi on three there, or pi on six, sorry, I think it was 30 degrees, I asked you. And you've got another one over here, another one over here, and everyone here is standing on this arc, the arc that's not really there. Okay. So you've got this kind of shape traced out, everyone has the same angle, but there's no reason why you can't look at the other side, right? All of these are also going to measure the same angle out because they're standing on the same arc, just flipped around. Okay, does that make sense? But have a look at this with me, right? You want Have a look because here, <coughs> I can tell you right now, you're not going to get two arcs. You're only going to get one. The question is, which one? Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you just for this example which arc it is, and then we're going to work out why it's not the other arc. Okay. We're going to get in this case here, if I've done my numbers right. We're going to get the top arc, okay? Let's draw it in so we can make a comparison and then I'll show you, I'll try and convince you why it's not the other way around, okay? So it's not a semicircle. It's something bigger like that. I don't know exactly where it is just yet. There are some tools that I'll develop in conics which will help me uh, next year work out where exactly that goes. But for now, at least I have the graph. I know roughly where it goes, okay? Okay, now where am I going to draw my other arc? It could be down here, right? So first, let me try and convince you this is the right one, okay? If I'm saying this is my locus, right? That means any point on here, like say, here's a point. Here's a point up there, okay? There's a potential Z, and it should satisfy this statement up here. When I compare these two arguments, I do one, take away the other, I should get pi over four, okay? Where are each of these arguments on my diagram? <coughs> Think carefully. Where are each of the arguments? Remember what I was saying? It's actually not about where you are, where Z is, and where it's measuring its compass. It's actually <laughs> where the bags are, right? It's where these two points are, and they're measuring up to Z. So I put Z here. I've got my real axis line parallel, my ray parallel to the real positive real axis going that way. So to measure up to Z, that's going to be this angle here. Do you agree with that? That angle that I've just drawn in is this first angle, right? Arg z take away 3 plus ti. Arg of z take away 3 plus 2i. You okay with that? All right, your turn. Tell me where the other argument is. What am I going to have to construct? I'm going to have to construct that ray, right? Which ray, which way, where's the ray coming from and where's it going? It starts from I, <coughs> and it's going to the right, isn't it? To the positive real axis. Like so. Okay, now where's the argument that it's measuring? It's going from I up to Z, where I'm saying Z should be, okay? So something like this. Okay, so this is my argument here. This one here, okay? So that's arg Z minus I in here. Okay, now for this particular Z that I've drawn, this particular Z, uh, which angle is bigger? Which angle is bigger? The right hand angle or the left hand angle? Right hand. The right hand is clearly bigger, right? In this case, only for this case at the moment, I've got an obtuse angle here and I have an acute angle over here, right? So quite obviously, this is bigger than this. 
But you can see, don't cloud your diagram too badly because it's going to get pretty busy. Even if I have an acute angle over here, where would I have to put Z in order to get an acute angle over here? There's only a very small pot spot I could put it on, right? Like I could put it there. Do you see that? That would work. Okay. I could measure the argument that way. That's just barely acute. Do you see that? But it's still going to be bigger <coughs> than the other one. Can you see why? Can you see why? When I measure from I, this will be an acute angle here, but it's obviously going to be much smaller. Are you okay with that? 